Today we're gonna do something a little different. See, it's easy to tell jokes every week when you know that you're always gonna have another take, but what happens when you have to do it live, in front of a live audience, in front of a live stream? Let's take a look at how these up and coming comics did at Forefront's first ever live comedy night. One mic, one take. Why? Because we have the Forefront, son. I saw this movie, right? It was this vampire chasing a dude in a Lamborghini. Like, chasing him in a Lamborghini. If anybody is chasing me in a Lamborghini and wants me to join their ranks, like, I'm pulling the fuck over. Like, nigga, bite me now. You know what I'm saying? I want one of those. And some bitches. Why do niggas call each other baby? They talk to their friends the same way they, they talk to bitches. Hey, what's up, baby? What's up, baby? Good to see you, baby. What's up, nigga? What's up, cute-ass nigga? Horrible-ass nigga? Wear those red shorts I love so much. Can you guys see me? I'm light-skinnedly challenged, so I want to make sure when I step in, you don't just see, like, buttons and a microphone and shit. <laughs> Let's keep the show rolling. YOLO means, for those of you who don't know, you only live once, which I thought, man, live more carefully. We got one life to live. Chill out, man. You don't want to do all those drugs. Relax. <laughs> But no, what it really means is, dude, fucking take those drugs, fucking party on the street, fucking drive your fucking vehicle off of a cliff. Who cares? You got insurance? Fuck that shit. I got one of the homies, he hit me up the other day, and he was like, yo, I'm fucking poodles now. I'm like, he's like, dog, YOLO. What's Theaterhead, you ask? Theaterhead is like baking a cake and eating it too. Why you getting your dick sucked? <laughs> I think of what I would tell my kid. Like, I want to be able to tell them that they could grow up to be anything that they want to be. Except if you're a sex offender. You know? Because at that point, your dreams of being a neighborhood ice cream man are pretty shot. I've been thinking about my children lately. I don't think I'm going to spank them. I think I'm going to jack them off. It's a work in progress, I guess. <laughs> This guy with these tight orange green pants caught eye contact with me. We're just looking at each other, and he walks right next to me, and he was like, mm, I'll eat you like a bag of Butterfingers. And he kept walking. So I followed him. <laughs> I'm a little bit vain, so I want another compliment. And as I was following him, I saw him bump into another guy, and he was like, mm, you like white chocolate, can I be your cookies and cream? And they locked arms and walked into a restaurant. Heartbroken. <laughs> You can't just go around Twix, Snickers, Milky Way. We have feelings out here in the streets. That flirtatious Willy Wonka motherfucker. <laughs> LA is too, is just, is different because people don't tell you the truth out here, man. The last comic looked exactly like Theo from The Cosby Show. Somebody tweeted that there's not a white comic at this show. There's not one. Ryan Coleman, bam. I want like a not gay, gay marriage. Where I just like come home, I was like, what's up, baby? He's like, what's up, baby? And then we like real nigga high five. I'm like, can you make me a steak? He's like, cool. We chest bump, we go to separate rooms. When my girl just stops in mid conversation, that means she's trying to figure out where the fuck I'm at. Like, I was on the phone with her one time. She's like, oh, baby, I made your favorite food. I got the chicken with the special seasoning, some mashed potatoes. And I'm trying to figure out what type of side you. Where the fuck you at? No, 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 it sound like no motherfucking John John house. What the, what the fuck? Is that a zebra in the background? There's only two things that make you look at your life decisions and get right with God. He's waiting on an AIDS test. <laughs> and being broke. You know, I'm talking broke like I go to the ATM just to make sure my pin number's still working. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm talking like started from the bottom, still there. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know you broke when all you got time for is to reflect on every dollar you ever spent. You get deep into it, like, man, in the ninth grade, I bought two bags of chips. Man, if I just bought one. <laughs> I think of all the things that I'll miss out on if I die, you know? Like, I'll never know what the fuck DMX stands for, you know? Like, he never did explain that, did he? When I walked into the class, this girl comes into the class and she was like, she was all excited. She was like, I just turned 18 today. And like all the boys and stuff, they circled her, they was excited. You know, she was the pretty girl in the class. So I go to write my name on the board, Mr. Tennyson, also out here. Damn, he fine. I 
was like, ah, oh, shoot, what am I gonna do? I hate to turn around. I probably need to send somebody to the office, let them know I don't play that. But then at the back of my mind, I was like, what if it's that pretty girl that just turned 18? This was the very first Comedy Night at Forefront. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't, well, go fuck yourself. You watched it already. <laughs> well, guys, that's our show. Um, make sure you guys subscribe right here if you like subscribing to things, right? <laughs> Check out our video playlist right here if you like playing with things. <laughs> I'm Batch, and you've been at the forefront. Boss. I got a chub to Roblo once.